So I'll do a quick overview of my analysis. But before I do that, why don't you give me your take on what, what intrigued you about, about the 89 uh, NBA hoops set that you wanted to, to look into? You know, do you want to go for the home run with one card? Or do you want to go with a likely a set of cards in a given year that have a lot of good stuff in them? Something where the investment isn't significant. Yeah. Could you go 1988 Fleer where you've got rookies all over the place? You got one of the best drafts of all time. Um, you've got, you know, a couple years Jordans, all that. And you're going to spend seven to 10 grand getting a box of those. And I actually watched an opening of a box of those. We should talk about that at some point. It was like pack after pack of Hall of Famer. It was crazy. So anyway, um, we talked about that because I wanted, in, in that box, I believe you're, because of the amount of players in the NBA, the amount of teams in 1989, remember, there were probably six less teams in 1989 than what there are today in the NBA. So you had half the amount of players. You had the same amount of packs in the box. And you also had the same amount of cards in each pack. So your chances of getting things like Jordans, David Robinsons, late stage magic, bird, all of these kind of I would say great player Hall of Famers that currently are going PSA 9 and 10s in the $30 to $70 range. Plus, you obviously got your Jordans and David Robinsons that are going into the hundreds at that level. Your chances of getting those are exponentially higher simply because of the amount of teams that were in the NBA and the amount of players that are on every team. You don't have 24 cards a team. You got 12. I mean, even people like Steve Kerr, Steve Kerr, who as a player would be going for a nickel on the hoops card because that dude's won NBA championships as a head coach, he's going for 30 or 50 bucks. Are you kidding me? Steve Kerr? Come on. I mean, that's what I like. Give me the opportunity to have fun, the opportunity to bring 27 cards into the mix with a lower cost of grading and all that. If they're still going for 35 at the lower cost of grading, I'm in. Bring them all together. I can get that box for 100 bucks. I likely have already made my money back by pack number nine. So why wouldn't they do it? That's what I'm thinking. You absolutely nailed every single point that I think everyone listening and watching this show should be thinking about. You have brought up so many strategic points that people don't think about. like literally half the half the players so you've got the same amount of cards in a box with literally half the checklist 353 cards in the 1989 nba hoops series 2 checklist and 700 cards in the upper deck baseball 1989 checklist so and you've got all these superstars so you nailed it and in theory this should profit Let's yep. break it down and see if it actually does. So I think one aspect that gets overlooked with sports card investors is do you do the buy it now on eBay or do you do an auction? And I can tell you right now that if you do an auction, you're going to save about 50 bucks. So if you buy a box. What percentage now, is that though? So 50 bucks on 500 or 50 bucks on 150? You're going to buy, you're going to pay 125 for a buy it now and you're going to pay $75 so what's that, like a third? I'm auction. It's what's more that? than a third. It's like 40%, right? It's like oh, yeah. No, that's significant. That's why I wanted to yeah. know. Is it 50 on a 500 or is it on our specific example? Yeah. So, yeah, that's 40% savings just by waiting an extra hour or day to get yeah. what you want already. Yeah. Or you can do or, or you could do a offer, right? You know, an offer on a buy it now and just say, you know, if you really want it right away, you can say, I'll give you $99. And at least you save, you still save 20. And every dollar is important when you look at, are you going to profit from this? So let's say, let's say $75 per box, right? Okay. So you've got same amount of cards. We're, we're ripping open about 500 or so cards. And you've got Michael Jordan base card in a PSA 10 is going to be $220. David Robinson rookie card 138, the press conference with the jersey. Love it. Be, and a PSA 10 is $800. So that's, that's your biggest hit, actually. 
The David Robinson rookie card 310 with the left-handed free throw uh, is on Series 2 only, so you're going to want to buy a box of Series 2. That's $135 in a PSA 10. Then you've got Magic Johnson base card PSA 10, $75. Michael Jordan PSA 9 all-star card, 36. I threw in the 9 because you're not going to get a 10 on all of these. And then you've yeah. got a bunch of guys. You've got Bird, Barkley, Akeem, Malone, Stockton, uh, Pippen, Dominique. You've got a Detroit Pistons championship short print card. I'm sure you've seen that one where they're – Absolutely. And so what I'm thinking is you've got at least – uh, 10 cards where you can sell them raw for $5 each. So let's say you got $45 uh, just from selling, or 50 bucks just from selling 10 different cards raw. Um, I'm going to rule out PSA grading because it's just not economical for this set. So if you say no, SPC not for grading. Maybe for certain cards, right? I mean, maybe, maybe for some, like you got, you got seven Robinsons. Hell, you're going to throw those in there. I mean, you, maybe you think about it, right? But yeah. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah. actually. I mean, if you, you, you've done the analysis, you just showed up. I mean, yeah, if you, pull, if you pull multiple David Robinson 138 cards, the press conference where he's holding up the jersey, um, yeah, you could do – you could justify if – if it's perfectly centered and crisp corners and – looks clear and everything and the back same thing uh you could submit maybe one or two of those but then you're yeah. you're, you're obviously you're you know, near profit. increasing your margin for error you know you could bomb the entire thing but but that's but hey it's about fun right so you want the fun yeah. but i think sgc is your play and i think you're most likely great again on these because i've handled i told you in our text message i've handled this set more than any other set and i'm telling yeah. you it's not great what I've seen, not from a condition standpoint, but from a centering, up-down centering is pretty hard to find really good. Right-left centering is pretty hard to find really good. So your best bet might be selling these cards raw to try to break right. even and get your, get your $75 back or go to SGC and hope for eight fives, nine, nine fives, and tens. Um, I think if you, depending on who you pull, your worst case scenario on this box is you're gonna you're gonna get about sixty bucks revenue, so you'd lose fifteen bucks. Um, but I think your best case scenario is that you can make you can probably easily make fifty sixty bucks profit on a box like this, um, depending on who you pull, even just selling them raw. But I would get your raw. That's not selling raw. In this scenario. Yeah. Okay. I'd get your Robinsons and your Jordans graded by SGC. And, I'd, and I'd, I'd sell all the other guys just raw on eBay. And I think, like I said, use the other, there, use the other guys to no. make the money of the box back. And then use your two, maybe three gradable op players opportunities to potentially hit the, the, the larger one. But you've got to like your chances of a, a bunch of raw ones going for the price of the box potentially yeah, right absolutely 